Hello friends, welcome to Foodie Printer's finest instant influencer network. In this bonus, you're going to know how to locate your influencers, how to reach out, what to say, and to start getting your first collaboration. Let's dive right in. First up, who are the influencers that you would want to work with? These are the items that you would definitely want to look at when choosing influencers you want, that you want to work with. You want to choose one that has aligned values with you. For example, if you're selling something, let's say a vegan chocolate chip cookie, then you want to be able to align with influencers who have the same type of values that would care about sustainability and not the ones that are, let's say, focused on a carnival diet, right? Because that's not the type of values that you want to be associating yourself with that influencer. Same thing with voice. What kind of voice do they have? Are they very prolific or are they very, very edgy? Are they the ones that you want to represent your brand? the size of their uh, following, you want to be able to choose ones that are around uh, 10 to 20 K or even less because they have tend to have much more engaged audience. And if you want to choose the ones that have like 50,000, a hundred thousand followers, most likely those are the ones that would charge you because they get bombarded with uh, requests all the time. The type of audience that they have really ties into the location as well, because we want to be able to work with influencers who are local within your demographic. If you work with influencers that are uh, halfway across the world than you, then you're not going to be able to convert for sales. You want to work with influencers who brings you sales. So those are the criteria that I would look at when choosing influencers to work with. Now, how do you find these influencers? Well, we use something called the rabbit hole method. What is the rabbit hole method? It is basically, we want to be able to search them through hashtags. That's the number one way. How do you do that? location based hashtag put in your location put in the food related keyword so for example in us in vancouver we start with yvr foodie or if you're in uh, new york nyc foodie la los angeles food foodie whatever the case may be type it in and all these tag results will show up select the first one because the one that has the most posts for example if you see yvr foodie you see that there's 493 K that resembles thousand, okay? 493,000 posts about this foodie or about this hashtags. Once you click into it, then you're gonna be able to see a bunch of posts. Choose out of the top nine to 11, choose the post with the highest quality photo. Why is that the case? Because majority of the uh, everyday life Joe out there, they don't take good photos or great photos. We take good photos when we go out and eat, but the foodies, they take exceptional photos because that's just their job and that's their hobby and that's their passion. So that's the reason why when you choose the ones that have high quality photos, majority of the time, they're the ones that are shot by foodies. And for us, we're looking to, we're trying to find influencers and foodies that can promote for us. That's the reason why we choose the first post or the first couple posts that has high quality photos. Next up is to look at their posts and who liked them and commented, right? When you click on their posts, once you click into it, then you're gonna be able to see the people that has liked them, majority of them are either followers or other foodies as well. So that's an area that you can find other foodies with. And at the same time, you want to be able to look for additional hashtags that you can click into and log and to explore other types of influencers as well. So their hashtag groups are usually located either in the description or as their first comment, as you can see right here. And we talk a little bit more in, about this in our actual module, module number six in Foodie Printer's Finest Program. So if you wanna learn more about this, definitely go into that module, that specific lesson to learn more about hashtags. Next up is that once you're in their account, Check their profile to see if they're an actual influencer or not. Majority of the time, they would say whether they're an influencer. The keyword in their bio would tell you whether they're an influencer or not, or whether they're a foodie. And you can see right there in the highlighted red rectangle that it says Deanna Wu, Vancouver foodie, right? We also want to be able to look for accounts that has more than 2000 followers. If they're just starting out with like, let's say a few hundred, you can still work with them, but it, it will be a longer term relationship. So for me, I would really start with at least 
2,000 followers, that has a really good solid base. They're not too big. They're just starting out. They, got, they have gained some type of traction. So whatever they say, they have a solid um, foundation and engaged audience already. So that's how I find my influencers. Also, another key point is to check out who they follow because they follow other influencers as well. And as you can see here, once I click into who they're following, these red highlighted boxes are also other influencers as well. I know because I click into them and I check out what their keyword is. And that's how I uncover a full list of uh, more than 50 influencers in Vancouver by following this rabbit hole method. And also another way that you can find influencers is from restaurant accounts. All, uh, a lot of times when influencers work with restaurants, well-known well restaurants, these restaurants would oftentimes tag the influencers who they're working with, and that's how you're gonna be able to find out. Check who they have tagged in their post, okay? And how do you check it? In the red, uh, as you can see on the post, you can actually click on that little button that has a red rectangle and the square on the bottom left-hand corner. And you're gonna be able to see, once you click on that little square icon, then you're gonna be able to see the different tags and the different influencers that pop up and you can click into that and go through the same process. That is the rabbit hole uh, technique. Use this multiple times to uncover all the influencers to work with you. Now, now that you have collected a list of 10, 20 influencers that you have logged down, how many people they, ha they have as followers, what their name is, where they're located, you need to understand why they would wanna work with you. It's important for you to be able to identify your food, your voice, your values, your mission and your purpose, and also potentially your pay if you are offering people compensation to promote and collaborate with you. Because at the end of the day, when you look into their profile, they will also look into your profile. They will also talk to you. They will also ask you different questions about what makes you special because understand this, they get bombarded with collaborations all the time, every day long, right? So you need to be able to have your information about yourself readily available. And if you don't know all these things, your voice, your values, your mission, purpose, definitely go and dive into module one and we take care of that for you. We help you uncover all these items. So then that way you're gonna be ready to reach out to your influencers. Now that you're ready, okay, what do you say when you reach out? We use two different tactics, okay? First up is a copywriting tactic called ADA. ADA stands for attention, interest, desire, and action. That's how you draft your message. Now, also another fundamental you should understand is WIMF. What's in it for me? As an influencer and as I'm going through the, the, the email or the DMs that you have, I also, I'm always asking, hey, you know what? Why am I reading this? What's the collaboration? What's, what's in it for me, right? So always understand that there is this underlying question that your influencers have would help you craft the best message that has the best chances of getting a collaboration. Now, let's start with ADA. ADA is the way you should draft your message, okay? Attention, that's what we start with. What would capture the attention of the influencers? Usually stuff is about the influencers themselves because why? Everyone loves themselves and if you're commenting and if you're trying to reach out to the influencer, comment on the pictures that they take because it looks so great and find that commonality peak their interest okay keynote is that a lot of people and the biggest mistake that i see as amateurs makes we start off with hey you know what i have the best vegan cookies and i would love for you to try it out well you know what me as an influencer i don't care what you have right like it, it, it's not it's not in it, it's not about you it's about the influencer it's about what value you as a brand bring your influencer and that's the reason why they would choose to work with you so we want to make it super clear on that no one cares about you never lead with you it's all about the influencer okay so next up interest what would in interest the influencers to keep reading right now that you commented on their post wow you have great pictures you it looks like this is like f straight from a photo shoot then usually interesting things that are facts and common themes amongst you and them find that commonality between you and the influencer find a picture that you can draw that relation with right a great way to is to merge into your ask and what you do is by 
finding that common theme. Next up is desire. What's in it for me? Now that you've piqued their interest, now that you find that common theme, the interesting things about what makes you and their brand match aligned, and that is a complementing a partnership for this collaboration. That's very interesting, okay? Let's say once again, if you're offering a vegan, uh, vegan DIY uh, cookie dough at home, right? And it just so happens that, as you can see here on the third image, that they have cookies. Wow, wouldn't it be cool if we, we collaborated and made a vegan cookie for you or a vegan ice cream for you? or something along the lines of that. Now, those are interesting common themes, right? Now we dump, we dive into the desire. What's in it for me as an influencer? Why does the influencer would want to work with you? Is it either money, getting paid, or value? Are you providing value to your influencers? Now, you might be thinking, you as a new brand, I don't have value I can bring. That is completely wrong because is it a special cause? or is it an uplift in status that you can bring your influencer? Are you the first in town to create this vegan uh, cookie set? And if you're the first, and if you collaborate with, let's say this influencer, then they would have a status upgrade because they're covering something that is first within their city. There's a talking point and you're giving them that, um, that avenue to talk about you because you are the first vegan cookie. So once again, understand what's in it for your influencer is key when you want to be able to work with them. Either they are looking for money, they're looking for value to stay relevant, right? Because they are content creators themselves. They want to be able to cover different things. So if you have the a, a Christmas themed holiday kit, then they would most likely be wanting to feature you as well during Christmas time because that's when they're looking for content that is relevant to the, the holiday. And once again, status. Are you giving them an uplift in status? Are you award winning or are you first in something? Or are you really well known for your vegan stuff? Whatever the case may be, we need to think about the money, value, or status that you bring to the influencer, okay? So find out that specific angle and reach out to them with that as an offering to work with your influencer. Also brand association. Um, next up, now that you figured out the attention, you got their attention, you piqued their interest, and you told them a desire that they have. Now, how can they work with you? The last way for them crafting the message is action. What do you want them to do, right? Reply with what you want them to do. Be direct. Hey, I want to do a collaboration with you. I want to do a giveaway with you. That is the end of drafting that message. And I'll give you an example, okay? I picked this picture because I'm like, wow, Rich, do you work for KFC? This picture is so on point. Now that we, we've stroked his ego, oh, wow, they, this guy is like, they know what they're talking about. Like, you're stroking my ego. Now, wow, the, and then I bring in a little bit more interest and, and talk about, hey, layers and ingredients is so proportionally displayed, the color grading so vibrant and appetizing. This looks like it's straight from a KFC commercial. One day, I wish our fish and chips can model like this too. Speaking of which, guys, this is now the interesting part that you find that common theme between you and your influencer. Speaking of which, we run Canada's first vegan fish and chip joint. Wilson's vegan fish and chips. Okay, you know what, I see that similarity. You covered something that is deep fried and you're covering food and also, hey, we talk about that, the fact that we're the first vegan fish and chips. Okay, this makes sense here. Okay, the desire. We have collaborated with Beyond Meat for a campaign to raise money for the Vegan Forever cause. It would be amazing if we could feature you as one of our ambassador for us to have a collaboration together. Okay, this is cool because now not only is there a status upgrade because now they're, they can work with the first vegan fish and chips. And on top of that, because they collaborate with us, there's the brand association to Beyond Meat for this campaign. And they're also uh, associated with a vegan forever cause as well. So all these things adding together creates this sense of, wow, I want to work with your brand because you have all these talking points and all these desires. What's in it for me as an influencer to work with you as a new brand. Now the action. Okay. Now that you've piqued my interest and now that you've told me what's in it for me, now it is 
How can I take an action? How can I work with you? Well, let me know if you'd be interested in partaking in this great cause by sharing with us your address. So then that way we can send you a meal along with our media package. This is your foot in the door. Okay, much love, Wilson. Now that's just an example to showcase to you how it works. Now that you have drafted your menu, now that you have understood which influencers to reach out to, and then also the way that you should be reaching out, what to say, how do you reach out? First, up and foremost, emails and DMs and in-person events. Now, because of what's happening in the world right now, in-person events is most likely not as prominent. Highly successful way is DM, right? Use Instagram's platform and on top of that, email them at the same time. Majority of the time, they will have that contact information out there for you as well. Now, another key point that I wanna add in here is that when you're DMing him or the influencers that you wanna work with, key point guys, key, key point, make sure you guys take notes right away. This is a shortcut and this is a hack, okay? Make sure that you start liking at least 10 of their posts. When you like 10 of the posts, it will show up on their feed. And on top of that, comment and on at least three of them, genuine responses, okay? Don't just put on smiley faces or like, hey, nice photo. No, find something that's common and have a genuine comment that you place on them and then you DM them. Why is that the case? Because now you're flooding his feed because as an influencer, they're getting hundreds of likes and hundreds of comments every single day. So if you're able to actually like them and also comment and on top of that, DM them, then everything would show on that one screen and they would see, oh, who is this person that just DM'd me? Oh, he commented on a post and that would increase your chances of your influencers seeing your post and your message. Now that you have their attention, what if they reject you guys? Well, you definitely want to thank them because oftentimes it's not that they don't want to work with you, but rather they're just swamped with other collaborations. It is always, I would say nine out of 10 times a timing issue. It's because probably you reach them during Christmas time and they already have a lot of collaboration at the same time, or it's because they are working with a big brand, or it is because they are already super busy and their mind's not in promoting at that time. Always the timing is an issue. It's rarely about your brand. So definitely know and understand that. So then that way, you know, not to, uh, take it personally. And on top of that, you can actually, knowing the fact that as a timing issue, ask them, hey, is it okay if I reach out in three months when things settle down for you to see if we can collaborate again? This is a long game, so definitely understand that so then that way you don't take it personal and not message this guy again. Because influencers within a city, it's a very, very tight community. At most, there's probably 30 or 40 influencers in your city and they all know each other. They not all go to the same events. They all go to the high profile events as well. So you would want to make sure that you thank them. And on top of that, understanding that it's a tight community, don't take it personal guys, because you don't want word to spread about the experience that uh, the poor experience that they have working with you. Don't take it personal. Now, what to do if they say yes? Okay, be responsive. Don't just be like, yes, now I can work on my campaign. Now I can figure stuff out. No, be responsive, be courteous, okay? Be nice to them and also be organized. If you're not organized, they don't like working with you because at the end of the day, once again, they're working with dozens of other brands at the same time. So the more organized you are, the no more nicer and friendly you are and the more responsive you are, the better the experience for your influencers. And know for one thing, you're working with your influencers, not just on one campaign, but multiple campaigns down the road for years to come. I still work with our influencers that we've worked with from five years ago. So that's the reason why you need to be organized, courteous, and always be thankful. Thank them for the opportunity to work with them. Now, how do you maintain the relationship after you have worked with them. Value, provide value all the time. And number one, value. Number three, value. You should always, always provide value to your influencers, whether it is monetary, if you have budget, then you can pay them, or you can actually uh, send them a gift package or like always in, in, include them in media events. Let's say, for example, if you have a new flavor, send free stuff to them all the time, uplift in status, these are all valuable ways to give for you to give value to the influencers. 
Now, action item for you. Write down your values for your brand. And if you haven't done so, or if you don't know how to do so, definitely dive into module one as we uncover all the steps for you to be able to do that. Second, write down and uncover the 10 influencers in your area. Follow the method that I just showed you, the rabbit hole method to uncover the 10 influencers within your area. Jot down the followings that they have as well. Now it is time for you to craft your outreach message using the ADA formula and the with formula what's in it for me understand that craft that that is the end of the presentation i hope you enjoy this bonus and if you want more information definitely what you can do is to go into the modules as we dive deep into each of these items i'll see you guys in the modules